So you say, sometimes after, then we're back into some discussion, and you're back in your mind. And we say, be empty of this. Be empty of this. Can we do? Yeah. Okay. And don't be waiting for something. So any feeling of now what or next, no next. There's no next. And also not waiting. So the sense of waiting come up. And say, no, not even that. Not waiting. You're still okay. Yeah. So you're here. You're not a container of any ideas, even wonderful, even spiritual, wonderful ideas or feelings. You're not containing, not holding. You're aware, but you're not combined with anything. Okay. So this is for you. Uh, hmm? The lazy man's way to enlightenment. Forget about it. Okay. So you are just here, no? And I've told you, don't go to the sense of next. I'm just speaking words now. I don't know to whom they are aimed anymore now. Because if you are not possessing, you know, the form of a man standing here wearing blue or something, you know? No, empty of every every association, every thought, everything. But you are conscious. But not conscious of, unless you are just conscious of conscious. You are conscious that you are conscious. This is fine. Okay. And not waiting, not imagining, just am, just is. Be very honest about it, no? because only here I can speak with you. Only if you come here, I can speak with you what I want to speak with you now. Are you a shape as awareness? Only awareness. No? Do you have a shape? No. Are you practicing or need any practice to be here? No. No. Is it personal? Well, personal would mean that you have a feeling about something and you know, I am like this at the moment and, and, and it's got some story around. Has it got any story? No. There's no stories, okay. Would you call it a state, that you are in a state? Bearing in mind that states come and go, they have a beginning and they have got an end. Are you in a space that has a beginning and come to an end? Now you got thinking eyes. You see, when I asked you this question, everything was coming, then I asked this question, you start to do like this. <laughs> I call that thinking eyes. You're searching with your mind to try and find what your mind thinks about it. Okay. So don't go there. Hmm? I'll ask you an easier question for now. Empty. Have you lost anything of true value by being here? Do you have any needs right now, just as the awareness itself? No. No. Can the awareness be sick? No. no. Can it be described as healthy? Yes. Really? Isn't health got something to do with body? Look again. Just the awareness only, not memory. Are you remembering something? I try to, but I. Yeah. 
And the I that's speaking now to answer is that the awareness answering or something else? I think so. Huh? <laughs> Uh, was awareness awareness? Awareness was answering that. Yeah. Uh, okay. D does awareness have any opinion about anything? Oh. Uh, <laughs> no. Is it subject to time? I don't know. It's 11.18 here. What time is it there? No time. What season? No season. You are discovering this, whatever this is, right now. No? You are in direct correspondence. Huh? Is there any distance between whatever this I'm referring to is and you? Is there some distance that needs to be covered? No. No. Now my question is, you are discovering it now, hmm? but where has it been until now? Hidden by the 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 mind. Um... Hidden by, by the mind from who? From itself or by something else? Uh. Can awareness answer this question? You are discovering this now. A discovery is being made that uh, you know this thing, awareness and yourself. You say there's no distance. So now you're speaking as awareness you see? Mm, itself. Are you sure, or are you referring to your person? I don't know. I don't know. Like I can hear the the mind like growling, yeah. like outside. Yes, and but that's somewhere over there. That's not really no. If you give attention to it, is it the mind come or you go? It comes. Mind come. Okay, mind come. Comes where? It intrudes upon awareness? Yes. In, in what way? Can it push awareness over a little bit, so that it can be there? I don't know. It's kind of, say, convincing uh, uh, words to, uh, for me to be identified into it. Right. So you are the awareness to which the mind can speak, and then what would happen? If identity arises from you, then you are pulled into a state. Would it not be like that? Yes. Yeah. Would anything happen to the real awareness? Would it suffer the real, the pure awareness? Can it be pulled out of itself somewhere? No. No. This is a very important thing because it's a misconception that's very common. That if mind comes and says, you know, you know what you're doing, you know, you got important things to do right now, and who is it fishing for? Who is it talking to? It must be talking to a memory of a self or an idea of a self, and then somehow it something gets pulled into the shape of the one who listens to the mind. Is this too subtle a thing to talk about? No. No, okay. But that would be watchable also, would it not? Hmm? Is there something that the observing cannot observe? If even if such a thing happened that the mind gets pulled or something gets pulled into a shape and now it feels like a person, is that not also observed? Yes. In the minute that you recognize that is observable, huh? Are you pulled into anything? No. No. This, this is the simple exercise that's happening with you. And this must become you know, somehow more and more stable. The more you look like this or practice this, let me, I'm going to come back now into the words, the word field, and say, the more that you, you, you look like this, 
the more somehow it becomes obvious that you're always here. Something keeps going out and you keep calling that something you. You may call that something your attention, but your attention is not you, because something is able to observe attention. That even attention, you may say, my attention is a bit restless today, I can't focus on anything. Something watches the, the capacity of attention to be in focus or to be scattered, be at the place of the weakness of them. Is it too technical, this talk? No. Because I will tell you something, there was a time when if somebody would speak to me like this, I'd be out of here. I did not can I could not grasp. My attention just I would by habit prefer to look at pictures. I could not listen. You know? How it happened then? Because that power was always there, unexplored, you see? But gradually, just like you're doing now, you're exercising the consciousness to recognize its own root. Before, all your power is being pushed up into personhood, and then somehow there's a very restricted field. Something brought you here. Something brought you here. Because beyond your conscious mind also, you don't know what you're coming for. You're discovering, wait a second, all these things that I've called myself and what I'm doing and not doing, all of these things are perceivable. You know? What perceives them? What perceiving all these things? Eh? Can that itself be perceived? You see? So, how are you if you pay attention to your inner environment now? How do you feel? Confused? Um, no. Not if I don't listen to the mind. Not if you don't go with the mind. So that's another thing, that the mind will come around, what we call the mind energy will come around, eh? and it could have uh, some sort of magnetism for your attention. Something may be interested, the mind wants to go. Then boom, you're gone. If the if if the mind energy is coming and and there's awareness of that, but no movement has come to go to it, nothing has happened to you. You must become a bit more familiar with this. I'm not telling you many things. I'll keep coming around saying the same thing. It all comes back to you, where you place yourself, your position. Is it in the person? Is it in the place? Of the weakness in consciousness, or is it deeper than the weakness in consciousness? If you watch this, something is watching. Yeah? If you come to the place that you can witness the sense of the person and its world, and sometimes you feel like you lose your focus and you're in the person, it's okay. Just keep coming back, and that power is going to grow very quickly. Your power just to to, to stay as the stillness that is there. At first you think you have to stay there, but very quickly you realize that you are here. You see? Very quickly it will happen. And it is an enjoyable exercise, because as you see that your mind cannot always succeed at distracting your attention away from your Self, there is a great joy in knowing that your power is returning to you to do that. And it is so quick, it could just finish right here. The main, the main, the government of the mind uh, gets snapped somehow. If the seeing in you is ready, you may see in such a profound way that your mind cannot delude you anymore. You see? But for most of us, it will catch you from time to time. But the more it catches you, don't, don't curse it. Don't complain. Don't call it bad luck. Don't call it curse. Just make use of it. Even if you don't understand, and it starts to burn inside and churn inside, you know. Be with that burning and churning and say, Thank you. Thank you. Grace is working in ways unknown to the mind. You see? But if you say, I don't like this, it's a horrible. Huh? 
then the mind is laughing. <laughs> it's got you. But if you somehow can see that this… Don't put a label of this bad thing happened to me. Your labeling is very important. If you put a bad label, then you create the energy of that label. If you understand everything that happens to you is for your transcendence and not to push you down, even though something might appear like its intention is to push you down, you use it to come up. You understand what I'm speaking? This is a very beautiful pointer eh? because largely we are creating our own prisons. When you say, Oh, this thing is happening to me, and so you give your me, which means awareness, consciousness, you put it in a very low status, in the status of a person, an ego. It is not this, you see. So, just like that, you just a few little pointers, little pointer, little point, pom, 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 pom. And you are there. I want to tell you something now. I have one. Uh, uh, sometimes we go to a doctor and the doctor might be spending a lot of time doing a lot of tests on you and trying a lot of different allopathic, ayurvedic, all of thing things to try and get to something and very complex, maybe over so long you have to do. You may come to someone hmm, who is so gifted that they just come and they look at you and they, and ah, they got it and they, they have diagnosed your condition and then tick tick they are straight into the treatment like that. This direct guidance is tick tick. Tick tick. Meaning pointing you in a way that you can make use of it immediately. Hmm? Immediately. If you look, I say, this is a tree that when planted, it bears fruit immediately and the fruits can be eaten immediately and they will keep getting sweeter and sweeter and sweeter, but it never gets over sweet. That is the fruit from the tree of consciousness. The fruit is also consciousness. Hmm? But at the same time, a force inside us is all, all, often in resistance to this discovery. And this is why sometimes in our human kingdom, we can do lots of things, we create a lot of things, but you have not advanced here. You understand? Right? We can create things, we can go to different planets, we can do things, whoa, to create, oh, fo, 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 fo. But how much we have advanced here, sometimes not so much. This you transcend here. Now, it's my own opinion by saying that I put this to be the highest and most profound discovery in the human kingdom, to discover that which is unchanging, timeless, whose perfume is peace and joy and love and openness, you see, hmm? that brings the the what you may call the fragmented mind and identity brings it into harmony and merges it into its source. This is all what this is about. And you can begin to experience and verify it today, just as you're sitting here. I know most of you have already anyway. Now it's just continual continuing to marinate in your joy. Because each time you see the ability or the power to look at something and from the right place, you have transcended it. You have not been given donkey work. Just by looking and looking from the correct position of consciousness, you have transcended. The mind cannot rule over you, because you are there before everything. That which I'm talking about is there before the creation of the universe, in fact. And it pervades all things in the universe. 